Canada, uh, your Prime Minister uh, is here to point out. Canada is broken. And uh, it'll keep getting worse. Uh... Welcome back, everybody. Opening video courtesy of Foos49. Go over there and give him a like. Holy cow, he's putting together these videos and uh, you should get a lot more views on them. So I'll leave the link right at the top of the description. Go check it out. Uh, give him a like. Give him a subscribe. Go check it out. Anyway, let's get into this. Uh, looks like climate change. Uh, enough of that for today. No, no, no. It's pride season. And in pride season, what comes with pride? Well, accusations. Here we go. The Liberal Party jumping right on this one immediately, uh, you know, making it a partisan thing because this is what they do. Uh, <laughs> not to mention dividing even the left on this issue. And we're going to get into that. But hiding from this year's pride flag rising ceremony, you got to be at these events you cannot abstain you cannot be absent you can't be too busy to show up to any of these things because then that would make you a bigot this is where they come from on this one liberal party of canada saying it's because he couldn't wear a straight pride shirt well this is of course referring to last year's incident where he was photographed with someone wearing a pride straight pride t-shirt wow okay uh, guilt by association uh, there, but let's get into some of this other stuff. Now, this being said, Pierre Polyev, uh, it's well known that his dad is actually gay, his adopted father. Now, it was written about in this, for people who don't believe me, Global Mail published this, and actually a pretty scathing article. This is actually pretty uh, gross the way they describe the whole thing, but Pierre Polyev's unique family story could be an ace up his sleeve. This is what happens when identity politics becomes the norm in in politics. It becomes a thing where, you know, someone just being themselves and just, you know, just living their lives becomes a political tool for one side or the other to use. And in this article, they go on to say a lot of awful things about Pierre being divisive. I, I mean, just look at the prime minister. You'll see what divisive looks like. But he, they said in this article here, in his victory speech, Pierre Polyev, Mr. Polyev, also openly referred to his father, Don, and his partner, Ross, not, all, not a not so subtle reference to the fact that his adoptive father is openly gay. So why would he be so against uh, all of that? You know, just, you know, people being who they are. Well, that's because it's not what that's really all about. Now, you don't have to look far into the liberal party to see it's rotting from the inside out you just got to shine a light on it uh but that's really where they are so they're coming out with their punches uh in full view it's it really is something else now normally for the, the the you know most of the year they're celebrating the spirit of envy but uh now it's pride season so let's look at what they've been doing on the left in philadelphia this uh, video came out, and this is crazy. Ryan Gerritsen points, it, points this out on Twitter. The left is eating itself. Free Palestine meets pride. Look at their faces. It says it all. <laughs> They're just surprised, actually. So obviously a pretty confusing scene where you've got uh, one leftist group uh, fighting against another leftist group in Philadelphia in this in this particular incident. Justin, uh, pro-Palestine protesters have blocked the Philly Pride Parade. The left are eating their own. Now this one made na international headlines. Uh, Jack here commenting on this. I know I said I wouldn't post anything unless it was a major, but this is too funny. The Pride Parade was blocked by Palestine protesters leaving the queer community and trans activists baffled because they assumed they were on the same side after supporting them with their queers for Palestine garbage and would be allowed to pass. Wrong, wrong, not the case. And of course, this is Ollie London uh, post posting this, Palestine versus LGBT activists holding Pride Parade have their march blocked by pro-Palestine protesters. Now, of course, this 
ended up turning into a brawl. I'm not going to hit play on this video because you can't do that on YouTube to show what happened there. But pro-Palestine protesters blocked the Pride March yesterday and started a brawl. It isn't peaceful protesting. No, no, it is not. And this is not just isolated to Philadelphia. No, this is happening right here in Canada as well. A group of protesters blocked the annual Pride Parade in downtown Winnipeg. Now, you go into the article, and it's, it, they, did, they did their best to not talk about who was blocking it. Usually, usually they'd be happy to say, oh, it was some far right, right wing group, something like that. But no, no, no. They went into it. News released from a group of protesters, as they say, uh, <laughs> says they're demanding that Pride Winnipeg end its complicity with uh we all know that word i can't i probably can't say that here Di <laughs> divest from corporate pink washing remove uh police from pride and center uh qt bipoc leadership uh same same old stuff we've been hearing about for years and i i'm telling you this is has actually has been happening for years We'll get into it in just a second. But here's a, a leaflet that was being handed out. Darren Penner posting this on Twitter saying, handed out today at the protest blocking Winnipeg, Pride Winnipeg, pink washing of, again, that word that shall not be said, from Turtle Island to, to Palestine. From tur we're, we're referring to Canada now as Turtle Island. If they <laughs> didn't like Winnipeg Pride Parade, perhaps these idiots can try organizing one in the West Bank and let us all know how that goes, because I don't think that would go too well. But like I said, this isn't new. This is a video from seven years ago uh, where Black Lives Matter interrupted the Toronto Pride Parade. <laughs> Breaking news in Toronto, Canada's largest pride parade is back on the move. A protest by the Black Lives Matter group brought the march to a halt for at least 30 minutes. The organization was given the status of honoured group for the event, which is the grand finale of the Pride Month. Now, Alexandria Williams is a co-founder of the Black Lives Matter movement in Toronto, and she joins us now. So, Alexandria, thank you for making the time for us. I have to ask the question that everyone in Toronto is asking, why did Black Lives Matter halt the Pride Parade? The reality is we, we halted the Pride Parade today because Pride Toronto as an organization has been constantly pushing black folk in terms of their programming, other marginalized communities, in terms of the programming in a very far, far place away in, in order for us to celebrate our pride. So today we held Pride accountable for their anti-blackness, for their anti-indigeneity, for the fact that we have been pushed to the margins way too long. Anti-indigeneity. Uh, I love the new words. I love all the new words. But of course, uh, originally Pride was was supposed to be for everybody, and then it it became an exclusionary group. It became an exclusionary group, saying that you know only only these people and these people and this is where this all comes in if it, if it was really just about everybody then you wouldn't have to have co people coming in and saying well we need representation in this as well it's supposed to represent anyone well anyone in the gay community apparently but uh of course again this new movement the one uh that was high the one that hijacked black lives matter has black has also hijacked this new uh, Palestine movement and is doing the same thing. As they say, history doesn't repeat its, well, history does, it rhymes. Uh, it, it, if, if, you, if you don't stop what's happening, it's bound to repeat itself. That's where we're gonna end, end up with this. Now, what are we doing to stop history from repeating itself? Um, well, we have different things that we're working on. Here's one as well. We Unify, the Reclaiming Canada Conference, is going to be happening June 21st through 23rd. I'll be there. And here's a, a great trailer that just, uh, just aired uh, for this. Accounts have been frozen and more accounts will be frozen. Small fringe minority holding unacceptable uh, views. Uh, Bill 36, it's a, it's a timely and important reform. The Prime Minister is defending his government's assessment and planned expansion of Canada's medically assisted dying legislation. Live and in person, we have Dr. Peter McCullough, Dr. Drew Pinsky, Zuby, 
Lauren Southern, Trucker Convoy founders Tamara Leach and Chris Barber, the Honorable Brian Peckford, and a host of legal, political, and social media freedom advocates will be at We Unify's annual conference June 21st to 23rd in beautiful Victoria, BC. Join We Unify's efforts to bring all Canadians strong and free to be inspired by world-renowned speakers at the Empress Hotel's Victoria Conference Center. A democracy is healthy when there's civic engagement. Where is our democracy? We never fought for 114 years to get a written charter of rights and freedoms to have it torn up in 40. Be sure to join us there. I'm, I'm excited for this conference. I'll be there. I'll be speaking. Uh, we've got all kinds of different panels that are happening. And uh, again, looking forward to it. But I'd like to hear your comments on all the subjects of today. What What's your opinion? What do you think of this whole, uh, <laughs> well, the left eating itself in this scenario? And then also the liberals trying to reach across the aisle to eat the other side. <laughs> we'll see how this one plays out. But leave your comments in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think. And we'll see you in the next one. Keep on trucking.